It's about time I came back to this, huh? Hey guys, what's up? Happy 7 year anniversary of Everything Wrong with Steven Universe. And also happy 5 year anniversary to this video. Yeah, 98% of you probably don't even know I made this. Back in 2018, I released this video on my process of making Everything Wrong with Steven Universe. To say it's now woefully outdated would be the understatement of the century. Seriously, back then I had such a bad computer that even the simplest of tasks took forever. Not to mention, I had a severe case of stay quiet because my parents are in the other room-itis. Plus, the video looked like absolute garbage and dropped frames constantly. I rambled on and on for a good portion of it, making it two hours long. It's just not a good watch nowadays. And apparently, Turner agreed, because they completely blocked it from being viewed in any country. Granted, that one was my bad. I pretty much showed the entirety of a Steven Universe episode, and that's a big no-no on YouTube. Ah oh well, not a big loss in my eyes. But maybe one of these days I'll put it on my Block Videos channel. Who knows? But considering how much my process has been streamlined, it got me thinking. Why not remake the video and give you guys a glimpse into what makes an everything wrong with video. It's certainly a lot simpler than it was back then, and I feel like I could be a lot more concise with it. So here we are. How do I make an everything wrong with Steven Universe video? Now, if you're watching this on the day I uploaded it, you may notice that I also uploaded an Everything Wrong With video on the Season 4 Shorts. That's the video I'm going to be making for you today to demonstrate how I do things. So, if you want to watch that first and then come back, feel free to do so. I'll have a card up at the top for you to jump straight to it. But either way, welcome aboard. Let's get this show on the road. So Wednesdays are usually the days that me and my co-writer Noah sit down and actually work on the script. It probably sounds completely crazy that we only start work on it halfway through the week, but with how Noah's work schedule is, this is the best day to make sure he isn't exhausted or overwhelmed while trying to think of stuff. Plus, it'll eventually give me two to three free days that could be filled in by a future job or just some relaxation. When the time comes, we sit down, watch through an episode, and just kind of discuss. Sometimes we agree on certain points and I instantly write it down. Sometimes he and I debate on some points one of us doesn't agree with. It really depends on the episode and our thoughts about it. We also try to balance each other out as much as possible. For example, since Bismuth is my favorite episode of Steven Universe, Noah tried to be really thorough with that episode's flaws to make up for me being a gushing fanboy. Meanwhile, since The New Lars is my least favorite episode of Steven Universe, Noah kept some of my more extreme points in check, contributed some of his own, while also pointing out some positives I wouldn't have even thought of. As a result, I I'd say both episodes turned out very well, much better than they would have been without his input. Now, there's only so much I can say with post-commentary. So for the sake of example, I've recorded our scripting session for this Everything Wrong With video and edited it down to give you an idea of the process. Since Turner is really sensitive to how much footage from the show I can use, you're probably going to be seeing a lot of our old buddy, the Copyright Shield. They're the best for making sure Turner stays the hell away from my ad revenue, so I'll be employing their services a lot. Maybe. I don't know. I'm writing and voicing this before actually editing it together. But anyway, enjoy! So yeah, I don't think, this was kind of a hard one to do a how I make videos one with. Because honestly, I'm not convinced we're going to find a whole lot with these. This is just them singing. This is just Steven singing. This is just pretty self-explanatory. I don't know. Well, we'll have to say it. I don't think we're going to get too much out of these. What is up with Steven's eyes? I think it's because his eyes are more um, vertical than horizontal. It's more like his pupils are really small. His whole face looks way too big for his head. His hair looks weird. Yeah, okay, no, no. Nah, he looks weird entirely here. Do you think I should say something? I don't know, dude. I think I should, and I can bold it. If I bold something, it means that it's not something I'm 100% confident in, but I'm going to include it anyway. If I get enough material, I will drop it entirely if I think it's dumb enough. If I want to drop it, that usually happens in the editing process. As I write lines, I'm kind of also saying them out loud to hear what sounds the best. If something sounds a little weird when I'm saying it out loud, I will try and word it a different way so that it sounds better. It's mainly just about what sounds right to me when I'm writing a sin out. So for this one, if it's for a face, it's like, what's up with Steven's face here? And then I'll like describe what's wrong with Steven's face. It looks entirely too big for his head and his hair 
looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. And then I'll ask, hey Noah, do you think that sounds good? And then I'll get his input on it. So what's up with Steven's face here? It looks entirely too big for his head and his hair looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. How do you think that sounds? I think that's pretty good. Yeah, so- Exclamation mark? Yeah, like I wanna, con do you think it's better with a period? I think it's, uh, I don't know. I'll go with a period. It's yeah. safer. And see, that's the kind of back and forths me and Noah have, just to like kind of make sure everything's as good as it can be. <sighs> I miss YouTube annotations. You need to have dramatic sigh, not just sigh. <sighs> no, right dramatic sigh. There you go. Ha! <laughs> 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 Like the gay sounds. Like? Oh my god, I miss YouTube no, annotations. No, 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 no. <laughs> I will literally stab you with a fork. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, Copper. Oh, it is. So it is an actual recipe. That she made up, it sounds like. Or he made up. Based off a real recipe, that's kind of neat. Should we take off a sin for a fact to the history behind this? I'll, I'll put it after this. What is this art style? Look at Amethyst. Or look at Steven. Amethyst looks like she's plotting a murder. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fucking kill him. It's gonna look like an accident. No one will ever know. <laughs> we are in frame one of this short and Amethyst looks like she's pro plotting a murder. <laughs> Steven looks like he just read the most bullshit thing in his life. <laughs> he just read the most bullshit thing in his life. <laughs> And Garnet looks... She's man-spreading. <laughs> Garnet looks like a man-spreading blockhead. She's taking up as much room as possible. <laughs> she saw those BuzzFeed videos. She wants the, her legs to be symmetric, <laughs> split right down the middle. I even stayed off the internet all day because I didn't want to get spoiled. <laughs> Why was that something special to pause for? That's not a phrase. That's a common phrase. It's not special. It's not a pun. It's not, it's not a, a pun. pun. It's not even like a Oh, wait, it is a pun. It is a pun. Oh, wait, it is because of the fucking... <laughs> 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 yeah. We're stupid. We're idiots. No, he's stupid for making that dumb pun. <laughs> because they're food. I know what you said. You literally explained it. We're goddamn idiots. Yeah, we jumped the gun a little too early we on that one. We jumped the gun. We jumped. We jumped. We hey, landed. Hey, hey, That's a lesson. We sometimes get things weird and wrong, and we have to realize it and just say something about it, you know? That's the thing with the whole sandal thing in the last season, where I'm like, oh, the sandal disappeared for the rest of the season. I just kind of trusted that off the wiki and didn't really look into it myself. So I was proven wrong, and I'm like, well... I guess it's time to make a joke about it. How did he get trapped in there? Why are you doing something? Wouldn't Lapis understand that she literally um used the wailing stone thing? Like she clearly sent a message where she's visible on a screen. Didn't you literally send a video message through the wailing stone? You should know what a video message looks like. Like she can see herself in the screen. She can see Peridot in herself. Oh my god, I'm trapped in the mirror too! You can argue, oh, she's an era one gem. She doesn't know how technology works. She knew enough to do a message from the Wailing Stone. Yeah, she was able to send a video message. And that's not even with anybody's help. Like, she, she had to sneak somewhere to send it. She had to sneak to someone, figure out how to send it, send it directly to Earth, to directly where the gems are. I think she knows how technology works if she's done all that. That's, some, that's something I noticed even when I was first watching this. It's more noticeable in the soundtrack version. Listen to when Steven's voice transitions from his, uh, his normal to his, like, high voice. I'm still not giving it sounds like there's, like, a cut there that they didn't quite hide no, correctly. It didn't sound like a cut to me. It sounds like... Cause like then Zach have to like for like even though he went through puberty and his voice changed, he kind of forced his voice to kind of stay Stevenie. I think it kind of just slipped. Maybe it is in one take, but it feels like to me it feels like they masked the transition between two takes not quite right. 
It's I don't know. it's really hard to explain to put into words. It's just when you edit for a bit, you can kind of pick up on things like that. I think okay, I think that's a job well done. Go team. That's the process in a nutshell. It took about uh <laughs> Hour and a half, about there, which is about normal for a thing like this. We usually talk a lot and research a lot of things, so it gets about this long. So probably tomorrow is when I'm going to do the voicing for this, and uh, yeah. Side note, I forgot something during my recording because I'm apparently on a mission to make this the most disorganized video ever produced. At the end of the script, I write three additional things. The punishment, the description, and the intro. The punishment is where I write both what the punishment is and what audio or video I'm gonna play for it. The description is pretty self-explanatory, and the intro is the bit I'm gonna do for the disclaimer. Writing this stuff down saves me from having to come up with something on the spot, so it really helps. Anyways, with that, it's on to the next part. So, after that really fun session of script writing, I usually take a day or two to cool myself down and relax, since the hardest part of the process is now over. On a fairly productive week, I'll sit down and do the voiceover on Thursday, but most of the time I just do both voicing and editing on Friday. I do all of my audio stuff in Adobe Audition. I used to use Audacity until I came back from my hiatus, and it's not a bad piece of software in the slightest, but to me Audition's effects just do a better job with what I need them to do. Plus, the Adobe Suite plan I need for Premiere just has it by default, so why not? Now, I'm gonna let in the moment me take things from here. The rest of the process mostly consists of things that can be explained while I'm doing them. I'll catch you guys whenever something needs to be explained in post. Hey, so I'm getting ready to record the audio for the Everything Wrong With. Usually, like I said, this happens on a Friday, but if I'm feeling productive, I will usually do it on Thursday. Um, so the process is pretty simple, but Depending on the weather, it can be very tedious. Mainly because you hear that fan in the background? Yeah, that has to go off. Otherwise, the mic will pick it up. And since it's currently probably up to about high 70s today, that gives me incentive to get this done quick because otherwise it gets hot in here and I get very irritated. So, with the fan off and very little background noise aside from the occasional car or whatnot outside. First step. Go up here, go to new, make a new audio file. Gonna name this season four shorts, cause that's what they are. These I don't really change. I hear it's best to keep this at this, but I used to have it at 4,800 and it didn't really make much of a difference. But this, I pretty much keep the same. I hit okay, it creates the file, no problem. Now, when it comes to my microphone, I move it up closer and in order to make it sound a little better, I go into my control panel, I go to sound, go over to recording, go to my mic, go to my levels, and I go, ah. And then I bring it up close to my mouth. This way, it keeps it sounding better. If I have it like down here, it doesn't sound as good because my mouth isn't as close. And if I have it up here, but with the volume up, it leads to more clipping, which also makes the audio not sound as good. So I get a certain distance away from my microphone so that it sounds the best. And this is what I sound like. Hopefully it's not too quiet or too loud. OBS seems to think this is okay. And so we'll go with that. Um, so when I've gotten this all set up and I've got my script open, which is right here, here's the script. Um, I'm just showing this off here that this is what it looks like when it's done. I'm gonna go ahead and move it over to the other monitor now because I would like to be able to see both the audio here in case something is wrong and I need to fix it and I can see the script at the same time. What I do is right when I start the video, I have about five seconds of silence before I actually start recording. The reason will be later when I have to put effects on, having five seconds of silence helps Adobe with noise gate, pretty much whatever little noise there is, like my computer's fan or if there's anything going on outside, it will pick up on that and cut it out. So that's why I give it five, a solid five seconds to just hear for any of that and then cut it out when I need it to. So. I also have to summon my everything wrong with voice, which means I have to up the energy a little bit. I have to yell a little more. I have to act like I'm talking at the thing I'm watching, you know, that sort of thing. My normal talking voice is a lot calmer. So I summon that to make things a little more exciting, I guess. It's something you build up as you do this kind of thing. It's not something you're gonna get immediately. Uh, but 
you do it enough, you'll get there. It's just kind of second nature to me now. So I'm gonna record the lines. I'll let you hear a few of them. If I flub up, you'll hear what I do with the flubs and whatnot. And yeah, I'll let you hear a few of them and then I'll fast forward through the rest of this. So shift space starts recording and here we go. What's up with Steven's face here? It looks entirely too big for his head. And his hair looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. Now what I'll normally do, that was an okay take. What I usually do with takes that I think are just eh is I will do the line a couple times and then I always make it so that the last take that I do is the one that I'm happy with. So I'm gonna do the, that was okay. I'm gonna keep doing the line until the take I like most is the most recent one and then I will keep going. So with that, I'm gonna now continue and do something like What's up with Steven's face here? It looks entirely too big for his head. And his hair looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. So for that one, I breathed a little weirdly, so I'm going to do it again. What's up with Steven's face here? And actually, I might even just go ahead and change. I'm going to move this over here so you can see it. I'm going to actually just change this whole thing so that I have more of a pause there. That way it's just more natural for me to say because then I can just breathe and then say this. And how the thing will work is I will be able to cut these into two entirely separate lines and it'll just sound a little better and I can edit it in post so that it also sounds better. So usually small adjustments like that also happen in this process where something doesn't sound quite right to voice but I decide I can change it to be like this so it sounds a little natural. So now it'll sound a little something like What's up with Steven's face here? It looks entirely too big for his head and his hair looks entirely too small. It looks entirely too big for his head and his hair looks entirely too small. I guess I should change that to be what's wrong, what's up with Steven's head here. His face looks entirely too big for his, yeah, that's better. So that way it can, that way it conveys what exactly the problem is more because just having his hair randomly when I'm talking about his face is weird you see just little things like that sometimes I just pick up on and then fix during the voicing process so this can be a long process if uh, some things I need to change are big enough so now it should be right what's up with Steven's head here his face looks entirely too big for his head and his hair looks entirely too small his proportions are all wrong. His proportions are all wrong. There we go. Now we'll move on to the next line. And this face certainly doesn't look much better. Hell, Lion even seems to agree. Hell, Lion even seems to agree. Also, these two avocados, which look like they were one whole avocado that was cut in half, doesn't look right either. One half of this avocado looks way bigger than the other half. They don't look like they belong together at all. So I'll keep going along like this on and on and on until we finish the script. So I'm just going to fast forward through the rest of this. Oh God, I can just hear the parasocial relationships forming after that line. All right, that's all for that. I'm going to go ahead and turn my mic back up so I don't forget again and so this recording doesn't sound weird. Sorry if this makes my mic sound a little worse. This is just a lot more comfortable for me because now I can see all of the screen as opposed to having my mic up and it covers a part of it. So once the recording is done, I can go over here and you know those five seconds I started with, I go ahead and I do this. Um, there are keyboard shortcuts that I use for this, but I'm gonna go through the effects menu just so you can see what I'm doing better. I go to effects, noise reduction and restoration, capture noise print. This will uh, take all of the background noise that is in this bit and uh, store it. Then I select all of the um, recording, do the same thing, do noise reduction. And now what this will do is this will take every bit of noise that is, that is throughout this clip and get rid of it, it's gone. 
bye bye. So next thing I do is I cut out the beginning and end of the voice line. I don't quite edit out the bad takes yet. This is basically just gonna be the raw voice line. So I cut the beginning and end so that it's um, a little bit more together. I go ahead and select all of it. There's two extra things that I do to this. I've learned that the order might matter because in my last couple Everything Wrong Wids, I changed the order and it made the voiceover sound a bit weirder. So we're gonna change back to the way I used to do it and we're gonna see if that helps. So the first thing I do is I go to Effects, Amplitude and Compression, and Dynamics Compressing. Uh, processing, I mean. This will put a bit of compression on my microphone that should, in theory, make it sound better. This is the curve that I use that I feel works best for me. It's gonna be different for everybody, though. I might wanna change this in the future, though, in case, just so I can make it sound a little better. So, I have no idea how this works. I just kind of played around with it until I found what sounded best. So don't worry if you don't understand it. I didn't either. Um, hit apply. It's gonna do some really weird big shit to this voice clip. Just make it the biggest thing you've ever seen. I'm gonna now go over to favorites and normalize to minus three decibels. This will um, push everything down and kind of level things out a little bit, just so it's not I'm not screeching and clipping the mic or anything. So this is pretty much the finished product. Now what I do is I go to file. Um, save as. Um, I'm gonna save this in a very specific place. This is my Steven Universe folder. It has pretty much everything that I use for everything wrong with in it. Uh, very cool, very nice. Um, I go to my voice clips. I've sorted it by season. And now I've just made the season four folder. I'm gonna go ahead and make another folder that has season, that is season four shorts or whatever the name of the episode is. The kindergarten kid will have its own thing. Uh, uh, know Your Fusion will have its own folder. I save the WAV file in here. I uncheck this because otherwise it adds another file that I don't really use. I hit OK. Make sure it's a WAV file. It needs to be a WAV file. That's very important. Hit OK. Once it saves, that's audition done. I should not need to have it open, but I like to keep it open excuse me, during the editing process, just in case something went wrong and I need to, you know, redo it or anything, always play it safe. Uh, next step, this might be a bit of a redundant step and I might be cutting this out of the process soon, but I still like to do it because it's just a nice reassurance thing that I know will make it sound good. This program right here is called the Levelator. What this will do is it'll take all the peaks here and it will push them to roughly the same level. I have my voice clips, my season four, my season four shorts. Uh, here's this file. I go ahead and just throw this in there. It's gonna work its magic to it. It usually takes a bit because this is a big file. It's like 200 megabytes, so it's gonna take a minute. And what it'll do is it'll push out a file that is changed, so I'll see it when it's done. All right, once the file's done, it'll say complete, and then this is the file it'll do. It has point output on it, so I can see the difference. Uh, just for comparison's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and open it in uh, open it in Audition. I don't usually do this, but just to show you what it what it does, here's what it looks like now. Here's what it used to look like. As you can see, it kind of leveled everything out to the highest peak, so that it makes it a little louder. It uh, it makes everything level so that every time I'm in Premiere, I don't have to adjust volume at any point. Everything's the same volume, the same way. I can just normalize it to one point and I can set it and forget it. That's the strength of this program is I don't have to mess with volume after I do it. So once this is done, step two is pretty much done. Now we move on to part three. So once the audio's done, Audition and this program are pretty much done. I close this. I'm gonna keep Audition open though, just to, cause just for safety's sake. The first part of this process, I'm gonna open Premiere, right? Wrong! First thing I'm gonna do is I have this wonderful little program here that is called ReCut. ReCut revolutionizes audio cutting, cutting up the audio and splicing it and, you know, putting it together, right? To the point where I don't have to do it anymore. I have these settings over to the right that I have fine-tuned for this. What I do is I take my, full, my file, I put it in, and what it does is it's gonna automatically cut any silence out of the video. It cuts out the silence automatically, 
and leaves me with a pretty much already cut up video or audio segment. So now that that's done, I've made sure it sounds okay. What I do is I go to export, you want timeline, I want Adobe Premiere, I export it, don't change any other settings, put it in the same place where your audio file is, that's very important, and that's recut done. I should be able to close it. Um, unfortunately, if you want to use this program, it will run you a hundred dollars, but to me, that is a hundred dollars well spent because this is saving me literally hours of time in the long run. With all the episode audio that I've had to cut up, it has probably saved me a good few hours. Very worth the money, in my opinion. But yeah, that's pretty much the use of that program. So now is the time I finally open Premiere. I have, if you remember this from last time, you can't really see my mouse, I just realized. I should probably change that. I have a template that I use for everything wrong with that is pretty much designed to make this as easy and effortless as possible for me. There's my mouse, hi mouse. So this is what my template looks like in Adobe Premiere. As you can see, little sneak peek, I've changed some things around here. I'm trying out a new font to see what you guys think. I changed the color of the sin counter so it's no longer pink. Um, the rest of this should main, remain mostly the same though. I may have to change the formatting of the subtitles because I changed the font, but we'll have to see. This is how this usually works. But we're not gonna look in this template yet. This is not quite that step yet. The first thing we have to do is we have to open, I've organized everything into folders here. We want to focus on the main fo video folder for right now. Uh, I'll explain what these mean later, but for right now, let's um, minimize that. Let's go to voiceovers. Let's make a new folder for season four because we haven't yet. Let's make a new folder inside the folder for the season four shorts, just to keep everything organized. And then remember that XML file we got from Recut? We are going to grab that, I believe it is this one, throw it into the voiceovers folder. And what that is going to do is it's gonna automatically grab that voice clip file, pull it into Premiere, and give us this sequence that when we double click it, um, automatically has our audio nice and cut up and ready to go. So now that this is in here and it's pretty much all cut up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrub through this audio sped up. What that is, is I press L and it plays at normal speed. If I press L twice, it plays sped up. I'm gonna listen to it sped up. I'm gonna cut out any failed takes, any flubs, anything like that. And I'm gonna cut it down so it's just the successful lines. Uh, so here we go. I hit play. What's up with Steven's face here? It looks entirely too big for his head, and his hair looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. Now, what I normally do, that was a So this whole I first do. part is pretty much just me. I'm explaining it a little. It's gonna be in the recording. Um, this whole part's pretty much trash. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fast forward to the point where the successful take is. Ooh, something important I forgot to mention. Unlike Sony Vegas, where you can just like kind of click around here and your playhead will move, that's not the case in a Premiere. What I've done is uh, I have this little script here called video editing. It's an auto hotkey script. When I double click it, it's gonna bind a certain key combination to my middle mouse button. So now it'll jump to my cursor. But anyway, anyway, sorry about that. Uh, we're gonna move ahead to the successful take. Okay, so this is where it starts. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take this, select everything before it, shift delete to ripple delete so it sends everything that isn't being deleted over to the start. See ya. And we are now at the successful take. Shift delete is very useful. So say for example, this was a bad clip and I wanted to move move everything over after I delete it, shift delete, it'll move everything over and uh, I don't have to worry about any dead space like I would with normal delete. And uh, yeah, pretty neat. Entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. His proportions are all wrong. There we go, now we'll move on to the next one. And okay, now this is a bad take, so shift delete, bye bye. Never see you again. His proportions are all wrong. There we go, now we'll move on to the next one. And this space certainly doesn't look I don't need that. Shift delete. Bye bye. And this space certainly doesn't look much better. How light even seems to agree. How light even seems to agree. Press on. Oh. 
and you got it. Don't need it. See you later. Don't need this. Never liked you in the first place. And, uh, yeah. We're pretty much going to do this for the entire thing. It takes maybe 10 minutes on a bad day, but usually we speed right through this. This is why I said earlier that I make sure that the last take that I do is my best one. It makes this process easy. Any take that is before it, the last take is the right one. Any other ones, get rid of them. We don't need them. And it's a quick and easy process. So I'm going to go ahead and do this real quick. You'll see how long it takes via the clock over here. And see you there. And now Pearl's staring off into space. Probably having a war flashback about Rose or something. Steven, personal space! So very important here, something that, uh... The recut flubbed up is this part. Flashback about Rose or something. Steven! See, it cut off the end of that line. That's because uh, sometimes it's not perfect. It will think that something that's really quiet is silence. So what I do in this circumstance is I press A. This will change my tool to this to move everything over a little bit. I will pull this out so that it gets the end of it. Rose or something. And then I delete this. Ripple delete and it should be fine now. I'm also keeping a listen out for that just to make, you know, I catch it now rather than catch it later and get annoyed and yada yada. All right, continuing on. Oh God, I can just hear the parasocial relationships forming after that line. That got cut off too, so off we go. That line. After that line. Hmm, that one sounded a little weird. I'll figure it out. If I have to re-record that one, I have to re-record that one. But there we go. There's the cut up. It took literally like six, seven minutes. Not bad at all. We've cut down an 11 minute recording originally to eight minutes. Now we're down to four and a half. Not bad, not bad. So once this is done, I go ahead and save. Um, and now the next step would be to make a duplicate of this main video template, but I want to show you around it first. Um, let's put a random uh, still image down so you can get a better idea of what you're looking at here. Here's the template. I'm going to go over it track by track, starting down here. Uh, a, I'm going to select the one over here that I'm looking at. A3 is where the ding goes. Very nice. Very well done. Uh, I usually put every ding here just so that it's uh, consistent if I need to go back and like fix something with the ding it's all there I don't have to worry about it being mixed in with like the audio or anything up here uh, you may be wondering what are those weird green things in your ding I put these here to mark where the next bit of audio or video will go so for example let's say that at a certain part after the ding uh, I want to change this picture to this one let's say uh, I time it so that I put the thing on the marker and that's when it changes. You may notice that during the videos, when I do that ding sound effect, I actually start talking or doing the next bit of audio a little before the ding noise ends. Uh, that's how, and I think it makes the videos flow a little nicer than it would if I waited until let's say the very end of the audio to change it. Cause if I do that, then it feels like it hitches a little bit or even like back here which is where the sound itself ends it feels a little slow that way i feel like videos are a lot snappier and a lot quicker when i start my next point like right about here these two uh the first one a one here is where i would put audio so for example, I still have to put the uh, season four episodes, but let's use this one for example. This whole window will be important later. Uh, this is basically the trimmer. I will get to it when I get to it. Basically for right now, I is my in point, O is my out point. Um, I pick the in and out points and it will trim to that specific section of video. Um, if I want to put both, if I want to just put the video down, I grab this icon drag it and drop it right here it'll just put it down if i just want the audio same thing over here grab it and drop it put it down um if i want the both video and audio on a timeline let's say i've got a point i want to make here grab the video itself here drag it drop it down and it puts both the video and audio down very nice very nice that's what audio one is for audio two is where the voiceover will go so I put it down on this track right below once again to keep things organized and nice and safe. 
so that if a voice line is wrong, I'm not like, say I had everything on one track here, I wouldn't be scrubbing through trying to figure out which one is which, which one is what. I can just have it all on its own track so I can troubleshoot accordingly. Now for these boys up here, let's start with video two. This is our letterboxing. This is the letterboxing that goes behind the, uh, sin counter the timer and such by the way if you want something above or below you would just um put it below something if you want the letterbox to be above the timer for example you moved above and it's covering it uh that's pretty much how the hierarchy of this goes so this is the letterboxing without it it might make sun scenes look weird the timer in particular since for some ungodly reason on premiere you can't put a stroke around a timer like you can with the sync counter you put the letterboxing there and it still has that like black bars around it that you put the sync counter and the subtitle on while still showing the episode pretty neat solution i think so that's what that is but these are the subtitles uh, in te sir text here, I go to my text tool, I change it, and I say I want to say Stephen would be good at cinema sins. That would be where I put that. That's what this layer is, it's subtitles. Um, if I want multiple subtitles for something, I just cut and move it and put it wherever I want it. Um, I started off pretty long just in case, you know, that way I have multiple segments. Because what I've been doing recently is, let's say, a uh, caption is this long. I will cut it off. I will move it to wherever I need it. And then I just keep kind of cutting and moving, cutting and moving, cutting and moving. So that I keep this here and I don't have to, like, if I run out, I don't have to, like, copy and paste it somewhere else. Bit of a pain in the ass to do it that way. Next up is the sin counter. Very simple, just have a bunch of numbers here. Now you might be wondering, well, what the hell do you do to change the sin counter? Do you copy and paste it and change the number? No, I can't do that. What do you do? Well, you may have noticed it earlier, but in my uh, main, main video folder here, I have sin counters. This has every single sin counter from zero to 899. Why 899? That's a very long story, but long story short, Premiere kind of killed a project that I was going to use to do that had this many sins for it, and so it's kind of just a remnant of that. Uh, so I normally never go beyond this folder, but I have these here just in case. So what I do is in here, it's a list of every single sin counter. This took about as long as you can imagine. There are Photoshop files, so I could just open it in Photoshop and uh, edit them as necessary. I did that to change the sin counter to ha from having a white out a pink outline to a black outline. I drag, I drop, it changes, off we go. Want a second one? Cool, put that here. Want to subtract a sin? Cool, put that here very nice and convenient it is by far the best change that i have made in this template because copying and pasting and changing the text in premiere or in, in vegas was a pain in the rear end and it did not have this kind of compatibility unless i kind of did a little hack for it so this by far has saved me the most time finally it's the timer i don't really touch this this has pretty much just been a uh, set it and forget it. At most, if an episode goes above seven minutes, I will stretch this out more so that more of the timer's there. But other than that, I don't really touch it. And the thing is, even if I wanted to touch it, let's say I split it, for some reason, splitting it resets the timer. So I have not ever really had a need nor a want to touch the timer aside from stretching it out. And the thing is the t timer on Premiere is very default. You can't change the font. You can't change how fast it goes. You can't really change any of that. So it's pretty much just been a set it and forget it. Don't worry about it unless you need to. So timer is pretty much right there. That's pretty much this template. I'm gonna set it back to what it was before so that nothing gets messed up. I'm now gonna close this template because I don't really ever touch it. Under sequences um, and under season three, I'm gonna go ahead and move it. I have the main video template right now. Actually, I'm gonna really quick make a season four folder because I have not yet. I was very prepared for this, as you can see. I'm gonna go ahead and move it into that folder. Um, now what I do is I right click, I hit duplicate it duplicates it and i just name it the name of the ep the name of the episode and main so that i can distinguish it double click it to open it and you know i duplicated it so it is exactly the same thing but now i can make whatever edits to it i need to without messing with the template itself very convenient now 
how I start this depends on my script. For this one, for example, I'm gonna have it over here, unfortunately, because I need to be able to see both. Um, this starts not with, like, playing a part of the episode. This starts with me immediately talking. So what I'm going to do first is I'm not going to worry about the timestamps right now. I'm going to basically put down the voice clips and the uh, sin counter and the subtitles down up until I need to play a piece of audio from the episode, if that makes sense. So we're doing all of this first. So first things first is you see this blue marker here that I haven't explained yet. That is where I'm going to put my edited audio. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste it and put it right in here. That way it's all there. I did not put it in the right place, though. It needs to go down here. Uh, Premiere isn't working with me, I guess, today, so we're going to manually move it down here. The reason I move all of them in is just because it's more convenient. What you can do is, let's say you got your sequence here, you could just drag and drop the sequence down. It's pretty much the same length. It's edited however I edited it. The problem with doing that is I don't really see the cuts like I can with this, so I don't know where the voice clips stop, where they start. With this, I can just grab a group of voice clips and just move it over as I need it. Very convenient. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab all the lines that I need. So I need everything from the first line all the way up to still looks off in comparison. So we're gonna move forward a little. Now here. But it still looks off in comparison. Okay, that was right. So we're gonna grab all of these, every single one of them, and we're gonna move them to the left. We're gonna go ahead and move the ding because I forgot to because I'm very smart. Now we're going to uh, move these and position them correctly. So after I say his proportions are all wrong, we're gonna up the sin counter. So what we do is we move over to his proportions are all wrong. All wrong. I take this, I do my, I probably don't do that because I think if I do that, yeah, it's gonna move everything. So uh, regular tool, drag, click and drag to select most bring it on over here. That gives me space to bring the ding over and put it down here. Make sure it sounds right. Wrong. Sounds okay. Um, move the sin counter over here so that it stops here. Um, grab my number one. I didn't have to do that, but this is just my way of how I usually do it. Bring it over and it should line up instantly. Perfect. Now I could just drag it in from here. It's quicker. I need to catch on to that. It's way quicker. I need to do that. Okay, this is one part, move it over, move it over, ding, ding, over, ding, ding, send three, and then this is all the last one, so move it over, move over here, ding, ding, over here, and this is four. Okay, so now would be where the audio plays, so I'm going to stop doing that. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to put down the video that corresponds with this. So most of this is just gonna be screenshots. First thing I need to do is I need to put down all of the season four episodes. So you're gonna see me do this because I haven't done it yet. Make a new season four folder because I have forgotten to do things and I'm very organized. We're gonna make a shorts folder in here. I'm gonna go ahead and just put the shorts in there. So here's my thing. Uh, before I went on my hiatus, I gr had there was a Google Drive around that had every single Steven Universe episode. So I now have every single one all stored right here, ready to go. I'm glad I got it when I did because that Google Drive shortly after I downloaded everything got taken down. So I have every single episode here, every single episode here. I have all of future. I'm pretty much future proofed and ready to go. Uh, so now we grab the shorts. Uh, don't mind this one. I'm going to end up having to use that one, but it's not as high quality as this one. Uh, grab them all, throw them in. Pretty easy. Um, whenever I want something in here, I double click it and it automatically puts it in this trimmer. Now, timestamps. I don't think I quite stressed earlier how important timestamps are in this process. If you don't use timestamps, you are going to waste hours of your life when you are editing. Basically get the timestamp of what you're looking for. This says 10 seconds. I double click that, I click this, I go 10.0, 10 seconds, move forward a little bit, scrubbing forward frame by frame by using left and right on the keyboard. And we're at the frame we want it. Here's the frame we want. 
to take a screenshot of it, I'll press this button here. Steven Universe, still images is where I put it. Put it in here, import into project, make sure that's checked, hit okay. And it puts the screenshot in, move it over and in it goes, perfect. We're gonna drag this so that it's about to the end of this. Uh, we are gonna use it again, so I'll be sure to have my copy and paste ready. So now that we've got this in, we are now going to do, you do the subtitles. Um, first subtitle, um, first of all, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut these as I need it. Um, so this is gonna, this part's gonna be one subtitle. This part's gonna be another. And this one's gonna be another. Do that. Now, all I pretty much do is whatever text I need, I grab from the script. Copy, put it in the thing, go to text, put it in, paste. That's all you need. Good old copy and paste, and, it, and the way I have the template set up, it formats it for me. What's up with Steven's head here? Now, when it comes to longer lines, like this one that covers up two lines like that one, if I put it in, it's not going to fit. All I do is I go to effect controls, the font is 75. I keep moving it down until 50. If it does not fit by 50, it does fit by 50, but I'm using this as an example. If by font size 50, it is not all in one line and it's still cut off, I will find a random point, backspace, enter. It'll take up two lines and it will give me a little more room. I will never go down past 50 unless it is so close that 48 or 49 will do it. Um, but for now, this fits on one line, so I'm now going to slowly bring this back up until it fits, just snug fit, right here. And we're gonna do the same thing with the next line, except this one should fit in one line because it's very short, his proportions are all wrong. Now this is what it looks like. What's up with Steven's head here? His face looks entirely too big for his head and his hair looks entirely too small. His proportions are all wrong. And this Weird mic aside, that is pretty much the process. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of this part, and then I will get back to you when we are at the next um, audio point that I need. One more thing, actually, when it comes to a special shot like this, I might want to zoom in on his face. I could start zoomed in, but for the sake of example, I want to show you a basic zoom in that I do with Adobe Premiere and how I do it. So let's say I want to start this shot here and slowly zoom in on Steven's face. First of all, we're going to jump straight to the very last frame that it shows. I'm going to turn this thing on. You see these effect controls here. This controls your position of the video. This controls how big and small your video is. This controls, whoops, one more thing. This controls your rotation of the video. This is pretty much the same thing, but it controls how it rotates. So if you move it over, it will now rotate around here. Say for example, we wanted to move it all the way over here and have it rotate around this point. Wanted to move it over, I mean, move it over here and see how much it rotates. Sorry, I'm not fully awake, I guess. It will now rotate around this point. Very cool, very nice. Usually I don't touch this. The rest of these I don't really touch, except sometimes if I want to fade something in, I'll use opacity. When it comes to zooming in, we want to hit these two buttons on both position and scale, because we're going to be moving both, we're going to be both zooming it in and moving it to zoom in on Steven's face. You hit this button, it toggles animation, you get something called a keyframe. What you do is you put it at the point that you want it. We're gonna zoom Steven in a little bit here. We're gonna move him over, we're gonna move him down. We're at a point now where I want to have things centered because this doesn't quite look centered correctly. So what I will do is I've set up a thing called a guide. What I do is I go to here, I hit show guides. This brings up two lines that are both the center points, in ver the center vertical and horizontal points of the video. So now all I have to do is line it up so that it's centered. That's probably about as good as it's gonna get. Turn it off and now it should be centered relatively well. I might nudge it a little more to the right. That looks good. Um, so now what we do is we've set up a keyframe at the very end. This is what it will be at the very end. 
if we go to the beginning and we set it back this button resets it to what it was before so this will be back to the center this will put it back in a scale now we've set up two keyframes one where it's normal and it looks like this and the other where it's zoomed in over on steven so now with how keyframes work it should slowly zoom in on steven until the point where it hits it so this is what it looks What's like What's up with steven's head here his face looks entirely too big for his head and his hair looks entirely too small his proportions are all wrong there you go slow zoom in um if i wanted to just have it zoomed in right away to this point all i would do is i would just not have a keyframe and i would just move it and it would be there already no need to have any animation or anything but i want to add a little animation have a little flare something moving you know sometimes having still images isn't very exciting so i like to do that another small thing here while i'm doing this let's say that i have an effect on this clip that I also want duplicated because I copied and pasted this to have two separate versions. Let's say I wanted the effects on this clip to be carried over to this clip. I would right, I would click on this. I would copy it, Control C, right click on the clip I wanted on the effects on, hit Paste Attributes, select what attributes I want pasted over, and hit OK. And any effects that are on this clip will now be on this clip. Pretty simple. All right, so that's that one half pretty much done. All the subtitles are in place. The video is where it needs to be. Uh, the sin counter goes up at the right places, all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this over a little bit just so it doesn't get in the way of what we need to try and do next. Um, so if you remember, the next sin required me to play both video and audio. So what I'm gonna do is that a point it says, this is also a subtraction sin, so it'll really help to show you what I do for these. Starting off, we start at 19 seconds, so we're gonna go there. We're gonna go roughly to the point, like right before they start speaking. I wanna cut it as close as possible. So it's about here where it starts. Yep, that's where it starts. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm going to scrub over to roughly where the end of the clip will be. That's about there, we hit O. Since we want both audio and video, we click and drag from the video to drag them both over in here. Now, here comes the uh, big thing about this. I am a person that, uh, believe it or not, likes to have ad revenue. And Turner is very, very, very sensitive when it comes to how much footage you can use in Steven Universe videos. To the point where most of my back catalog is pretty much ravaged with copyright claims because I've used too much footage and had it running in the background in the past. Um, I've taken measures recently to avoid that and I feel like it has really helped in terms of not only having monetization on, but just keeping the videos up in general and not having them eventually taken down. So let's say this whole clip I'm using followed by having some of it running in the background while I have a voice clip on. As it is now, this video will get claimed. The reason is because I'm letting the video play too long. So what we want to do is strategically make cuts throughout the video that will not only be for brevity's sake to make the videos not last too long, but also to dodge copyright. So for example, Lion is going to say this, followed by a bit of silence. What we want to do is cut that silence out to the point where it still sounds natural while also still not being not letting the video run too long so we go to where steven starts talking cut this out and now it sounds like this it still sounds natural and it will fool the copyright bot. The bots on YouTube, when they're looking for things to claim, they are looking for a long stretch of video and audio. By cutting the clip in this manner, it does not quite match up with the video that the bot has on file, so it will not be able to recognize it as Steven Universe, and thus it will not claim the video. 
This is crucial because if I use too much footage even at one point, which has even more of a risk depending on how long the video is, the whole video will get claimed. So it's very important that I keep these cuts in and I uh, make it as short as possible. The rule of thumb that I use is to not let a clip run on uncut for more than five seconds. That tends to be the cutoff point. If I have anything longer than five seconds, I'm taking a risk. So when it now comes to uh, letting clips play for whenever I say have a voice line I put down, let's say I have something I wanted to say here, um, I could just cut it every few seconds, but depending on how long the voice line is, that is entirely too much work. So what I do instead is simply cut the clip, right click the clip, go to speed and duration. Make sure this doesn't have this next to it, otherwise I will have to drag the clip out manually and simply set the speed to 25. The bot cannot detect videos that are slowed down. That might be uh, why some copyrighted works have survived on YouTube because the video speed has been slightly altered among other things. I tried flipping the video, but that hasn't helped. I think they've gotten smarter to that. Next best thing is to have a filter over it if there's a particularly picky part. Um, that's what the copyright shield is. Well, that's what I might have been using throughout this video. Next other thing is to move it around the screen if needed. That also helps. Um, I've not taken any of those measures yet, mainly because I haven't had to. This typically has done good. The movie has the only real thing that has been very, very sensitive. So that's the only thing I've had to apply most of this to. I guess we'll see in the future if that changes. So yeah, anytime I'm talking, I slow the clip down and YouTube can't typically detect it. That's why after, when I'm talking for a long time, that's why the videos are slowed down. slowed down. It's purely to dodge copyright, no other reason. Yeah, that's pretty much that. I'm not gonna do it for this clip because I'm pretty much just going to be subtracting a sin and that's it. So it's not really necessary to have it be 25% speed for five seconds. So what I'm gonna do is now that I've got this cut up. I'm going to see if there's anything else I'd like to cut up. This is going to be about over five seconds, so I'm going to cut a small bit here. Like over from here to here. Even that small little cut is going to be enough to dodge the bots. Another important thing to note is that if you cut something, you may notice that there's like a little click in the audio that's from the volume suddenly changing, that's from other things suddenly coming up in the audio that weren't there before. This might have had it. I heard a small little click. That is solved, I learned this recently, that is solved by going to your effects. Um, constant gain is the one you want. It's basically a transition, transitions between two clips. All you wanna do is drag it over the two clips, um, pull it down so that it's as small as possible. And that should solve any click problems while also making the transition sound pretty much invisible to the viewer. Now, subtracting a sin. Pretty much the same process as adding a sin, but with a few extra steps. First of all, what I like to do is at the end of the clip, I like to go one, two, three, four in, um, and then paste it. I make, feel like it makes it sound a little better, keeps things snappy. Um, right click, speed and duration, reverse speed. That will reverse the ding, makes it sound all right. Then what we also do is at the end of this, we go one, two, three, four. Um, I used to be able to put markers on reversed clips and you still can, but the latest version of Premiere bugged it. So I can't really do that anymore. It's kind of sad. Um, so now we're one, two, three, four in, we move it over to the marker and this is where we put our sin down. And this is what it looks like. And then right at the end of the clip, see ya. And that's pretty much it. That's how you reverse a sin. So there'll be, there's gonna be a uh, few more adjustments we're gonna make at the very end, but that will be at the very end. I will be talking about that. So yeah.
that's pretty much the process. I'm gonna edit this another day and record myself while I do it, because honestly, I have been talking long enough. I'll record, and I'll see you guys there. Hey, here I am. I'm definitely more rested than I was the other day, so hopefully I'll actually be able to make some sense today. We'll see. So the main bulk of the editing is done. We've got the main video sitting all ready to go right here, but we're not quite done yet. We've still got a few extra steps we have to do. First thing I always do after doing this is first of all save, just in case I didn't, and then I head on over. You see these other sequences here? Not this one, this one's done. Uh, these other two sequences are going to be very important, along with one that is not quite open yet. We'll get to that in a minute. First off, we got to work on the intro. So, what I did before I started recording is I basically mostly reverted this back to the way I had it. You may have noticed in Everything Wrong With Bubbled, I had the disclaimer kind of fade in, like more of a stylistic choice in a way. So I basically just set it back to normal here. What I do is it's basically just a simple bounce. You click this, you see what keyframes you have. Basically just a simple bounce with the scale. I make it come in, I make it come here, and then I make it go back. Basic bounce, very easy. That's what I do for the disclaimer. Disclaimer used to not be very good in my older videos. I called this series a parody when it is very clearly not a parody. I guess I didn't know what parody meant back then. So I changed it. Make sure, cover my ass here. Make sure, hey, you know, there's gonna be humor. It's gonna be both criticism and humor. You've gotta be able to know which is which, yada yada, all that fun stuff. So what we're gonna do is these two things right here. Uh, not this one actually, but this, we're gonna get rid of it. Don't need that audio anymore. That's from the last episode. Uh, I always have things from the last episode here, mainly the screenshot back here for something important I'm going to do in a minute. And this is definitely important to keep because we will need all of this in a minute as well. This is mainly the main meat of the intro right here. We'll get to you in a minute. Um, the disclaimer screen is what we're gonna focus on for the moment. So uh, we need to figure out what shot of the episode I'm going to use in the background here, just to make the disclaimer a little more visually interesting than just a black background. And I may have located that earlier. Go over here. This, I think, is a good screenshot to use. So we're gonna hit the screenshot button. We're gonna go ahead and drag it into the timeline. Now that I've put this in here, you may notice it's a little bit lighter than this. That's because on this, I have this brightness and contrast effect that I've grabbed from my effects rack, and I've turned the brightness down by 50. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy it. You can copy effects, go over to the clip you wanna apply the effect to, click into the effects window and paste, and it will paste exactly the same effect. Now all I have to do is get rid of this and put this in its place, and it's like nothing ever happened. I'm gonna drag it out a little bit just so that it has a little more room to breathe. I'm also gonna get rid of this because that was a byproduct of the uh, last outro and I'm gonna drag these to be equal. This should be about right now. Now, if you remember from earlier in the script, I wrote down something kind of peculiar in the intro. You're probably not gonna have any idea what this means. It tells me exactly what bit I'm going to use for the intro. You know, every intro I have a bit of audio that plays that, you know, makes it stand out. So this is basically telling me I got, for this bit, I'm going to use a Charmix re-upload and I'm going to use the intro from it as a form of joke. I am gonna have to cut it down a little bit, but that's the basic gist. I have it saved in my sound folder. So what I'm gonna do real quick is under episode specific, which I don't quite think I explained. Basically I have this folder for any assets that are only going to be in one everything wrong with video, just so that it lowers clutter pretty much. I have things where I like them and I can hide it if I don't ever wanna see it. So, I'm gonna throw this in there because this is technically something that will only be in this video. I put it into the trimmer. We're going over to about 10 seconds in and we're going to cut it when he starts talking. Right there. In, and then we go to, it was 17. We go over to 17. Sorry, Charmix, I'm gonna have to speed through you a little bit here. <laughs> Reverse. 
about there is where he start, stops. I can always trim it a little bit if it's wrong. I take the audio, I move it in, and I'm gonna trim it down so that it's only the bit that I want. So we're gonna have to turn this down. Let's go ahead right now and normalize it to about eh, maybe eight should be good. What is up, my internet friends and family? Perfect. Uh, it's a little quiet. I can turn it up later if necessary, but this seems fine. We're gonna start immediately when he starts talking. The goal with these is we wanna move as fast as possible. We wanna get things moving so that people don't get bored, so that, you know, we keep the pace up, these videos don't get unnecessarily long, etc. So we're pretty much gonna trim this down very finely so that we get only the bits we want. We're gonna cut out any stutters, we're gonna cut out any pauses, we're gonna cut out any other extra nonsense that doesn't add to the joke. Pretty much anything like that, so. What is up, my internet friends and family? I'm Charmus, and today I'm going to react. Like that little breath there, we're gonna cut it out. And today. Not necessary, like even a little bit. I'm sure no one would care if I did this, but to me, it feels better to just cut out little shit like that and get to the point. That's the appeal. We gotta get to the point. And today I'm going to be reacting to YTP acting to. See that pause there? We're gonna get rid of that. Why? Not needed. I'm going to be reacting to YTP sex drugs. We don't even need that YTP part. I think that'll make it even funnier. So then it turns, if we also cut out a little bit from this, it will then go into... Reacting to Sex, Drugs, and Steven Universe. Perfect. Cut out this end bit. Cut these out so that it's a pretty cold cut right where we want it to end there. And so it looks like this. What is up, my internet friends and family? I'm Charmix, and today I'm going to be reacting to Sex, Drugs, and Steven Universe. Very funny. That's gonna bring out the ha-has. That's gonna hammer in the yucks, as I like to say. I don't know why this is over here. We're gonna delete that. Um, once that part is done, once we cut out, we are going to drag everything over to this point. You may look at this and notice, hey, this is an empty event. What's this about? This is basically the bridge between the disclaimer and everything wrong with. Because you see, if we, uh, just ignored the bridge and put it in like this, it would go a little too fast. So, and we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put it in. I use the empty graphic to keep a little bit of black screen just so that the pacing isn't too fast. So that gives us a little bit of breathing room between the disclaimer and this part. You could just say I don't need this and I could just manually count it. And I could, but that makes it way faster. It's literally just snap that point to it, and off we go. Now, first thing we're gonna do, because it's the easiest right now, is we're gonna change the text. So let's go back to the video, and let's see how long was it. It was five minutes and 24 seconds. So that qualifies as almost five and a half minutes. If it's like within 10 seconds of the threshold, I will say it's almost that amount of minutes. If it's between like one second and 19 seconds, I will typically say over X minutes. That's typically how I uh, go about it. So for Bubbled, it was in over eight minutes because I think it came out to about 8.15 or something along those lines. So I said over eight minutes. So for this one, it's gonna be almost uh, five and a half minutes. Uh, I also forgot to say that I also have some motion set on this uh, stuff here. So a bit of motion in the ocean, as they say. It's a little bit zoomed in, so you can't really see it from here. See how the keyframe moved there? Yeah, it starts very, very big. It gets very small. It's also fading in a little bit, just so it doesn't come in too harshly. And uh, yeah, same for pretty much every asset. I do pretty much the same thing. The spoilers text always stays the same. I'm staying mostly unique to Cinema Sins for the most part with that spoiler thing, mainly because I think I can come up with some pretty funny phrases for the thing under it. Then it comes to the spoiler text. It's basically just, I go to the episode's transcript and I say something funny that adds a spoiling to it. So what I'm gonna do, um, I'm gonna do it on this screen actually and bring it over so you can see it. I'm basically gonna go to the episode guide. I'm going to uh, 
find the shorts, I'm going to go to the transcript of one of the shorts, and I'm going to pick a random funny line and change it so that it talks about spoiling. I think the best episode for this would be Steven Reacts because they talk directly about spoiling, but I'm going to be a little creative and I'm not going to actively pull that kind of thing. Uh, let's just look through maybe something Steven says. Oh, there's something. Huh, I didn't think I'd be spoiling this early into the episode. You know what? For the sake of this, you know, this is meant to be a more funny thing. I'm gonna go ahead and go with that. So I'm gonna copy that text. I'm gonna paste it in. And then I'm gonna change crying to spoiling. Pretty simple stuff, I'd say. Uh, it's never been like rocket science or anything like that. It's never been, oh, I gotta strictly come up with the most funny thing anyone's ever heard. But, you know, I like to think I try a little bit, you know? Um, so that's it for the text. What we need to change is the background. Now, normally, what I would do is I would just grab the episode's title card. I would loop the background as best I can. And then I would just let the um, episode, like the title card, sound play. Uh, that's not going to work here because most of these don't have title cards. So I'm going to have to come up with something on the spot. And I might have an idea on what to do. So what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to just grab some screenshots of cool moments in the episode and go from there. Okay, once these are all in here, I'm going to scale them to about 25% of their size. Yeah, no, I did this wrong. I wanted to be 50. Hold on, hold on. I never said I was smart. <laughs> I'm gonna move this guy over to about there. Move this guy down to about there. Might need a little more adjustment. I think this guy needs to be moved over a couple more. Take this Y coordinate and make it the same because they are pretty much gonna be looking the same. Uh, take this guy and snap him to about here. This isn't gonna look perfect, but it's gonna be pretty close. Um, now it's pretty much just a case of uh, copy and paste. Take this guy's X coordinate, put Steven's React there, take this guy's X coordinate, put him right here. Now move Steven Reacts up to where I want him to be. Okay, Maybe one more. Take this guy's Y coordinate, paste him to here. Perfect. Gonna nest all of these. I don't think this is a process I quite explained while I was video editing. Um, if you press the uh, press the N key, it does a thing called a nested sequence where it takes all of these video files and instead of it taking up four layers, it only takes up one. So I'm gonna need to do that again because I'm gonna make these a little long um, just so that it can fit. I'm gonna make it a little too long because it's better to have too much than not enough. So we're gonna have one nested sequence and then we're gonna darken all of them. So effects window, brightness and contrast, uh, brightness to negative 50, maybe a little less because it looks a little weird, negative 30, perfect. And then in big old dummy thick text, we're gonna have season four shorts. We're gonna bigen that up a little bit. First of all, we're gonna center it. We're gonna bigen it up, we're gonna center it. I can't talk, we're gonna bigen it up. It's gonna be like, let's say 200, no, it's too much. Let's say 150, it's still a little much. Let's say 135, perfect. Uh, then it doesn't cover too many of them. We're gonna center it again. We're gonna bring the stroke up. The stroke is pretty much the black line around the text that makes it stand out against the background. Um, and there it is, season four shorts. It should hopefully fit in the template. I'm also gonna change the font just so that it's not clashing with the everything wrong with font too much. Let's say if I change the color to be the same as Steven's shirt, what would it look like? Eh. 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 How about we go like yellow, his, his star? That's better. We're gonna go with that. It doesn't have to be some form of high art. It just has to be uh, pretty, it just has to look all right. So there you go. 
So now we take this, delete the original title card, but put the cur put the cursor at the beginning, then delete the title card so I know where to put this new one. Uh, ooh, I might have to nest this down too. And then drag it in, put it in, and there we go. That should be done. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, I should have it fade in a little bit. So that's the cross dissolve effect to make things fade in. I don't know if I explained that either. Could have make it about 20. Perfect. And then you could still see the text. Um, yeah, should be good. What I might do though, um, double click into a nested sequence. You can still edit the parts of it. Uh, I'm gonna make this negative 40. And a negative 30, negative 37.5. That should do. Uh, that way you can see the text a little bit better. Perfect. That should be it. Let's see what it looks like. What is up, my internet friends and family? I am Charmix, and today I'm going to be reacting to Sex, Drugs, and Steven Universe. Very nice. So that's the intro done. Now we move on to the outro. Now you may notice we don't exactly have an outro here. What's the deal? Well, the outro is something else that I have made a template for. Let's have a look at the template real quick before we dive in. Uh, here's the outro. I usually, every season, am going to try to set it to a different music track. Last time it was Team Fortress 2's uh, intro theme. This time, for season three, it was Dragon Ball Z Budokai 2's intro theme. I just think it's a really nice, funky piece of music that works in ending something off. So let's explain this. Um, title card is again, just the regular title card with uh, the brightness turned way down so that it's not really the focus, but it's still there. Sin Tally and Punishment is its own uh, text here because I don't really need to change it. I just uh, I just kind of put it together because I didn't really need to have them separate. I think it's easier that way. So you may be wondering then, how the hell am I only making Sin and Tally show up? That's because of the crop tool, which is up here. Um, I pretty much have just cropped the text so that only Sin shows up and Punishment doesn't show up. Then I've cut it up into different segments so that Sin shows up, then Sin Tally shows up, then the whole thing shows up eventually. The numbers are each their own separate graphics, so I can edit them individually. So if I wanted to change this one to a two, I would have to change the positioning slightly because of how this formats the numbers, but I can do that. The end number, I can change it to a seven, a four, two, a nine, a four. I'm showing I don't know my numbers, but whatever. I'm trying my best here. And then punishment's very simple. It's just red text with the Cruniverse font, like most of this. I only just changed the color to make it stand out. And uh, yeah, you get whatever punishment. And then I have a funny little audio bit like I did with Steven Floats. He got hit by an airplane. That's what that one was. I don't know how many people uh, quite got that. And then the end screenplays, which is just a rendered video. I used to have something way more elaborate there, like a uh, big old flashy show all the title cards, show a bit of each episode outro, but while that looks good and while I'm proud of making it, the problem is that it makes making the outro way too long because then I have to come up with a new dancing bit to put in as the end screen and it's ultimately just a process that gets me burnt out faster than usual. So I decided to drop it, unfortunately, just because I don't want to get burned out as quick. Uh, sorry about that, but I have to do what I have to do to preserve my mental health. So, uh... That's the outro template. So because it's a template, of course, according to the last time, you know what we do. We duplicate it. We rename the duplicate to season four shorts outro. Just the name of the episode and outro works. Double click into it and then we can edit this copy of it. So we jump to here because this has all the info we need. Uh, we check and see how many sins we had. It was 10. So the only thing we have to change for this end screen is to change the zero the four to a zero. Let's say, for example, though, that this had to be a three or a two or whatever. Because this is a zero, um, it's gonna have to be pushed in a little more. So what I'm going to have to do is just push this in until it's about equal with all of them. It doesn't have to look perfect, but this looks close enough. 
But let's say, for example, that this was something like a five and this was something like a two. I have to do the same thing, but the position's gonna be slightly different because five doesn't go, go out quite as far as zero does. So it doesn't have to be quite as far. Um, so I would move it to like, say about, it, the box makes it kind of harder. Right about there-ish, something like that. Um, I did accidentally type 21 though, so that might be messing with it. There we go. Uh, and yeah, there it is. But we don't have to worry about that this time because it's just 10. So we only have to change one digit. It is the easiest change you can make. Um, change the punishment to uh, whatever the punishment is. This time, however, was something um, specific that didn't require text. So this time we don't need the punishment text. We're gonna go ahead and get rid of it. Um, and then after that's all settled, before we actually do the bit, we're gonna change the uh, background back here. So for this, what I would usually do if this were an episode is under the outro folder, I have a list, I have a folder that just has all of the title cards. So let's say this was hit the diamond. I would drag it in. This would be the title card. It needs a lot of the effects that this one has. So brightness and contrast, copy, paste. It now has the same brightness as that one does. That's what I would normally do. However, this time is a special case because it's just I had to make my own title card. So we're going to dive back into intro. We're going to double click into this. We're going to take this nested sequence and copy it. Close the nested sequence here and paste it in. Not there. Up up a little further. Okay, it's not going to cooperate. So we're going to put it here and then we're going to drag it over. Uh, I am going to have to bring the brightness down on this one though. So negative 100 is what it usually is. Um, it's not going to have the text either, mainly because I don't think we need it. So I just take this, copy it over. It's not going to be perfectly there, but um, it's not going to fit and I can't drag it because it's already at the maximum. So I'm just going to hit my R key, which is the uh, rate stretch tool. This changes the speed of a clip depending on what you drag it to. I'm going to drag it all the way over. And there we go. It's gonna be slowed down, but it literally does not matter even a little bit because it's a picture. So it's not gonna show anything. Um, so for this, um, it would usually be punishment text and then whatever audio bit I have. But this one is a little bit special because instead of, whoops, uh, that's cool. Thanks for doing that. Um, instead of having any kind of uh, punishment or audio bit, I have a funny takedown request joke to make so what i'm gonna do for this one is i'm going to wait for the when the music is supposed to peak or when the punishment is supposed to appear it appears right on this beat drop so we're gonna cut it so that the music cuts off yep and then we're gonna delete the rest of this and we're going to put in another episode specific picture. We're gonna go to, it's in my pictures folder. Hold on a second here. It is right here listed under takedown. We're gonna throw that in. This is an asset that I kind of just threw together in Photoshop in like 30 seconds. Um, this video is no longer available due to a copyright claim by Cartoon Network. I could have said Turner Broadcasting, but I feel like Cartoon Network, more people would get that. So we're gonna show this for about three-ish, seconds I can just do that by speed and duration three seconds oh, we, and we need to get rid of this and then we drag the end screen over and that should be that so if the joke lasts a little too long I will shorten it but this is what it looks like right now Okay, it's going a little long, so I'm gonna have it be for two and a half seconds. And then bring it over. Perfect. And then the end screen plays and that's pretty much it. So that should be the end of the editing process, lest I forgot something. I will rewatch the intro. I've already rewatched the video to make sure the video is good, so the video should be fine. Um, but now I should be able to just move on to the last step. So what the last step is, is this current final sequence. Now what this is, is it's all of the sequences for the video put together into one final video. 
This, you might notice, has some lines to it. That's because the sequence that is in the timeline is longer than the sequence actually is. That's fixed by just doing this, then this, and then that should correct it. It should be the right length now. So, what we're gonna do before we play anything is we're gonna get rid of the previous two. We're gonna go into our sequences folder, because something really cool that Premiere does is it lets you put sequences themselves into the timeline. So we can just grab... That's also the reason why we made multiple sequences. That way, at the end, we can just grab... Oh! Season four, season 4 shorts outro. We can just put that, like... Well, actually, we're gonna do that later. But we could put that down right now if we wanted to. And then season three short, season four shorts main, excuse me, wherever the hell did it, where did it put it? Oh, all right, it's in, uh, it's in fucking here. And then we bring our main template and, not our template, our main video and we put it in there. We're gonna have to move this into season four. We're also gonna have to move the outro template into season four, I forgot. Let me go ahead and just do that now so that it's not like, uh, just in somewhere I'm not going to be able to find it close this because we never have to look it in the eyes ever again and then put the outro in there so great so in theory this should be correct this should just be the right order and we should be able to just jump straight from segment to segment let's see let's go to about the end of this and let's see if it flows what's up with Steven yep and then this should flow straight into the outro that line Perfect. Okay, so there seems to be nothing wrong with it unless I catch something later when I watch it through with Noah, my co-writer. Um, so yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same trick I used earlier as I use question mark to select every bit of video that is selected. I could have just said control A and done it just to make absolutely sure there's nothing extra over here that would also get rendered. Um, we save, again, very important step. Make sure everything is saved that we do. Um, Go up to File, go up to Export, Media. This will take us to the rendering window. Basically the final steps to make sure everything's right. Gonna make sure that the location is put in the right place. I have sorted these, so it's now time to make a new Season 4 folder because I forgot again, uh, because this is the start of Season 4. Oh, Season 4, yep. Nope, I wanna change the text for, I wanna change the text to be, uh, okay, I guess I'm hitting I want it to be season four. I could say reason four, but, you know, that would be a dumb reference that not many people understand anymore. So, uh, yeah. Say season four shorts. Make sure it's labeled correctly. We're going to make sure our settings are correct, because sometimes Adobe likes to change your settings on you. Um, we want a maximum render quality, 1080p, 60fps, progressive scan, square pixels. Make sure it looks the best it can. Hardware encoding that goes way faster with my graphics card. The rest of this looks okay. Um, we're gonna go ahead and render it at the location that we have specified. Hit export. My Now my recording's probably gonna get a little laggy because we're at rendering right now. Um, and that tends to be very GPU intensive as well as recording with the settings that I use. But it doesn't take very long at all. It takes like two minutes, maybe three. Um, Depends on the length of the video, of course. Bismuth took about five minutes. So did the new Lars. Um, and yeah, we're rendering and we're going. Uh, once this is done rendering, we'll move on to the next step. So I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, it likes to do this. It's stuck at 100%, but it's basically done. Um, it'll say something in the bottom right eventually that it's finished. So right when that happens, we are going to go over to the next part. I'll see you there. So, I usually do this part and part five at the same time. Um, I'm going to do them individually today just to give you more of an idea of how the process works, lets you focus on one at a time, all that sort of thing. So, we're making the thumbnail this step. Uh, I'm gonna real quick before we get into it, show you what I used to do because it's only this last season that I actually changed it. So, here we are into the thumbnail. We're gonna open our thumbnail template, at least the old one. I have a separate one. I've saved this new one just in case I wanted to go back to it for a thing like I did for the April Fool's video this year. Um, and yeah. Okay, great. Awesome. Where the hell was my train of thought? <laughs> uh, ah, okay, I was showing off what we do here. 
So the old template was pretty dead simple. Let's say I wanted a uh, cool title card from, oh my god. Quickly before we get another call, so if we want to put a title card in here, uh, let's say we wanted beta, for example, we just put it in, we drag it down here, we change the in about X minutes to whatever the hell it was, let's say it was over five minutes, whoops, uh, thumbnail done, uh, I would change the colors of the text to be, this would be pink and this would be blue, but pretty much that's it, it would take 30 seconds. Um, obviously though, it's not very visually distinct, so I kind of scrapped that eventually, and I'm now going with a more visually interesting thumbnail. This one. Uh, it looks more bold if you in concept. This is just up here, this is just down here, but oh, this goes way more deep than you think it does. This one is quite a bit of work, but it ends up looking pretty good in the end. So, first step, is we need to grab a random screenshot from the episode. Um, in this case, I'm gonna grab a screenshot from this short. I've already had the idea. Most of the time though, I do go digging for it. Um, I just be through the episode and try to find a funny, cool face or whatever. I usually try to make it either cool, either a really iconic shot from the episode, or funny. Either one of those three. Hey, hold on. I'm going to use this face, I believe. Either this face or a later one, that one. Either that one or that one. We'll see which one works better. But I'm gonna give this one first. I'm gonna try this one first. I'm gonna do this one first. So, take a screenshot. We could import it to the project, but we're not going to, because that might create some unnecessary clutter. Um, go to still images, grab it, and pull it in. Um, it takes a minute to sort. I have it sorted by date just so I can grab it immediately. Uh, grab it, put it in. There it is. Um, we're going to have to size it to about where we want Steven to be. So we're going to pull him about up here. We're going to grab it. We're going to pull it maybe down like about here, maybe up like about here. Pull this down a little. Yeah, that looks about right. Um, I'm gonna try and center him as best I can, but it is gonna be a little awkward considering the guitar. Um, that looks like he needs to be moved over like the teensiest, weensiest bit more to the right. There we go, that should do it. Um, it's not perfect. Uh, I don't think people are looking for uh, much perfection though. Um, so what we're gonna do is with this in place, uh, yeah, it's obviously not gonna go the way we want it to. I could do this, but honestly, I think it looks a little bit jank. So, I decided to start doing something a little bit cool. Let's add some depth to this thumbnail. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the magic wand, we're gonna go to our object select tool. Now, what I do from here depends entirely on how good this tool works. Sometimes this tool does an absolutely perfect job in cutting Steven out here, and I have no complaints. Other times it will do half the job and I have to do the rest manually. Other times it won't even pick up the thing I want to do. So let's roll over, and it looks like today, oh wait, we're not on the right layer. Uh, looks like today it's gonna be doing half the job, so. Yeah, it's picking these up as different parts, so unfortunately, we're gonna have to do a little more work here. So we're gonna click this, uh, it's gonna select whatever it's picking up. We're also gonna hold shift and select this. That will add that to the list, I guess you could say, of things that it's selecting. Um, only problem is that now if we, uh, first of all, we have to rasterize it, I will have to undo this in a second. If we rasterize this, it's gonna look absolutely god-awful. How? Horrible. Absolutely horrible. Half of it isn't even there. So, what we're gonna have to do, um, I'm gonna undo the rasterization. What we're gonna do is we need to go to our quick select tool and we need to basically fill in the parts that it missed. So this whole big section here needs to be a part of it. We're gonna roll over it. This whole part here needs to be a part of it. I'm probably gonna have to turn up the uh, width of this just so I can better see what I'm doing, excuse me. Uh, 
make this part a part of it. This is going to be a little bit of a process here because it was very weird in how it picked up some parts of this. Okay, most of Steven is good now. We need this bit of the guitar. Put that down here. We need this bit to be a part of it. We need his hand to be a part of it. It was really trying to cut out Steven's whole ass hand. Steven's hand's gonna need to be a part of it. The rest of the fucking guitars and his fingers gonna need to be a part of it. <laughs> Jesus Christ. As you can see, Photoshop is a good tool. It can just be very janky sometimes with what I do. Um, okay, so we, you think we might be done? No, look at this. It's not putting in the outline. So we're gonna have to lower the tool and we're going to have to make sure it picks up the outline. Yes, I am this particular with it. Uh, now I'm gonna go around the rest, now that I know it's doing that, I'm gonna go around the rest of the outline and make sure that it is going around the outside of it. It doesn't have to be perfect because this thumbnail is likely not gonna be viewed in depth up close. So if there's some parts here and there that are a little off, I'm not gonna lose any sleep over it. Uh, yep, going down, going down, going down. I think that's good. Um, so now we do the same thing. We go to layer, rasterize the image, the object, I guess. Um, control X to cut it. Uh, looks good to me. Don't really see anything obvious. Make a new layer, put Steven on the new layer, and try my best to line him up as best I can. Good part about this is that he was right up against the bottom, so I can just pretty much slide him into place. I go back and forth a little bit to make sure I've covered my bases. Okay. It doesn't look perfect, but it's there. You may notice if you zoom in that there are still some parts that are uh, a little bit off. Like here, you can see some of the transparent background. Here, you can see some of it. It's not perfect. Um, I don't know what calculations Photoshop does to how it cuts out a selected part of the image, but it's not entirely right. And if I leave this as it is, when I render it, they will come out as white pixels around the edge. We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hide this real quick. We are going to use the magic wand tool to select this part. Um, again, it's not gonna be perfect, so I'm gonna have to use the quick select tool to um, select the, pretty much the whole thing. So once we've selected part of the part, where um, the outline is. You may notice it's still not entirely perfect. Like, first of all, we need to make sure these bits of it are selected. Uh, I'm just gonna turn the brush size up and just go to town, I guess. I love, I, I love thumbnails sometimes. Can't you tell? Nope, new process, new plan. If I just make a big ass brush and then just go across all of Steven, it should just select him because it's on his layer. Perfect. Okay, we've selected Steven. Really quick, we're gonna go to select, um, modify, expand. We're gonna expand it by like four pixels. That will bring out the range in case it is missing some parts of it. We're gonna go to the part, the background that Steven was cut out of. We're gonna go to edit, fill. It's gonna try and do a content aware fill that should fill in the colors. If it does it right, the background will look like just the door in the background, and then I can just move on from there. If it does it wrong and makes an Eldritch Abomination none of our mortal minds can comprehend, then I'm going to have to figure something else out. Let's see what it does. It's making an Eldritch Abomination that no mortal mind can quite understand. Okay, so we're gonna probably just have to put Steven here and then just fix whatever we find as we go. Look, right now, it doesn't exactly look horrible. I think this will be fine as is. Um, I'll have to look at it in finer detail when it actually renders. I just usually like to do that step just for security's sake. It's not necessary 100% of the time, but it is uh, nice to have. So now all we have to do is take this layer and move it down. And now the words should be in between Steven. 
Steven is a little big, unfortunately. I know there have been some complaints that I make these thumbnails look a little weird because you can't really see everything wrong with, but honestly, that's kind of the point. The thumbnail isn't really meant to be something you're supposed to glean all the info from. It's just something that's supposed to catch your eye, nothing really more to it. So I make these thumbnails to catch your eye more so than to get all the information you need from it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably just gonna make the text Steven's shirt because that's the focus here. So everything wrong with, and then it'll be Steven's clothes as the colors. How does that look? Honestly, I think that's a, I think we have a winner. So now once this is done, it has depth, it has everything, we just save it. Export, quick export is PNG. So I've just made a season four folder because of course I forgot to. So we are going to do season, it's gonna name it season four shorts. Very nice. I could see a small imperfection up here, but honestly, if you're viewing it from like, most people are gonna be viewing the thumbnail from like this distance, um, maybe even a little further back. And I don't see anything off about it here. And so yeah, that is the process of making the thumbnail. Now it's time for the final part, which is uploading the video, which has its own steps and aches to it. So once the video is done, I head on over to my YouTube studio. It has gotten quite a facelift since the last time I've done this video. Um, go to create, go to upload, and we're ready to go. We pretty much just grab the finished version from our folders here. Here it is. Um, 512 megabytes, or 531 megabytes. How do you get 12 from that? It's not very bad at all. Typically they go up to about 700 ish megabytes so this will take probably about five minutes to upload because my upload speed is not the best thing in the world um i guess we'll see so drag and drop and it starts to upload while it's uploading we're going to fill in some information uh the title is pretty much going to be the same across all modern everything wrong with it's everything wrong with and then the episode's name but since it's just season four shorts I'm just gonna say season four shorts in, and then I have to remind myself real quick of what the time was. It was uh, five and a half minutes, so almost five and a half minutes. And then in parentheses, Steven Universe. What I, the old titles that I used to do was Steven Universes. And then the problem I had with that was that you would have to glean most of the information from the thumbnail on what episode you were getting. And I feel like that wasn't quite what I wanted to do. So I changed up the order of the title and I feel like this works a lot better. Remember that description thing that I have in the shorts here? I, this is where I copy and paste it as well as copying something over from a notepad file we're gonna open up called YouTube Tags. Here it is, very nice. And we're gonna get to this part in a minute, but right now we need this bottom part. It has the link for my co-writer, and it has the tags that are in, that are up below the title on your YouTube um, app. That's what those are, you put them in the description and they show up there. Um, thumbnail we got to grab the thumbnail a lot of this is going to default to my streams because i do a lot more streams than i upload videos uh thumbnails season four season four shorts and that's what it's going to look like in youtube um we can put it in the playlist now but usually since the videos are private they will show up in the playlist as a private video back during like season 1a remake i didn't really like that but nowadays i realize that most people aren't really gonna care if anything it'll excite them for the next thing so we got everything wrong with steven universe in the playlist there important step here we have to make sure this is set to not made for kids because if it is set to made for kids then ad revenue is going to plummet and there are going to be no comments on the video which kind of defeats the purpose um, and i also swear a lot so that would be a little weird to have saying made for kids um paid promotion no we don't have a paid promotion <laughs> but uh yeah maybe in the future if i ever do get sponsors for this thing i will have to say yes to this but i don't see that happening for a while yet mainly because i don't really have any form of contact uh but uh yeah we'll see hit show more and we ignore pretty much all of this except for the tags that is what this notepad file is for it is for my tags 
these tags I have used ever since the beginning of the me doing this. They have not failed me yet, and so I usually continue to do it. Um, these might change, though, eventually, even though tags don't really have as much of an impact in um, YouTube search nowadays. I still like to do it just in case. So what we do here is we go to replace. We are going to replace every single asterisk with the name of the episode, Season 4 Shorts. Now, it's going to be covered a little bit here, so I'm going to have to have a little faith in the system. We're not going to hit replace all because there's one where I have to put in something different. Oh, and I accidentally replaced it anyway. So, it did it twice, so we're going to have to, yep. Now, this is where um, it's different. For this one, I just capitalize it. It's really not that big a change. Um, so, yeah, I replaced every instance I would need with the name of the episode. Copy it. Don't need this anymore. Make sure you don't save it so that the asterisks stay. Delete what's there already and paste, and the tags are pretty much done. That's all for this tab. Monetization, of course I want that on. I like earning money, thank you very much. Usually the videos aren't any longer than eight minutes, but even if they are, I don't have mid-roll ads because I just think they're annoying. For the Save the Light video, it was a little different because that was a 40 minute long extravaganza and I felt like I wanted to put at least a couple mid-rolls there. So I just decided, yeah, if it's longer than like 30 minutes, I'll put some, but for everything wrong with, I try not to. Um, that opens up ad suitability, which pretty much determines what criteria you'd have for monetization. The only thing I change here is abbreviated or sets or profanity, moderate profanity used frequently in the video, which describes me. I've done that every time and YouTube hasn't given me grief ever since I've started doing it, so that's just what I do. It's pretty, that pretty much describes my video. Moderate, um, occasional use of shit and fuck is allowed, so I go ahead and go for that. Go ahead and submit rating, it'll work. Um, video elements, now's the time to put in the end screen. All I do is I hit import from video. Um, Bubbles, Bubbles end screen was a little bit different, so we're not gonna use that one. Instead, we're gonna scroll down to back to the moon, which should have the proper, wait, no, proper, that doesn't have the proper end screen either. We want to go to earthlings, which should have the proper end screen. Yep. And that automatically puts it into whatever I want. Very nice, very nice, very nice. You probably can't hear it, but don't worry. There's nothing you have to hear here. YouTube stops showing me my playlist for some reason during these end screens. And for other people, it still comes up. But for some reason, for me, my playlist just won't show up in the end screens. I have no idea what the problem there is. But I've heard for no one else it isn't, for anyone else it isn't a problem. So I don't really worry about it. I guess I'm done looking at my own shit. Uh, this will come in whenever copyright checks are done. I will keep an eye on this so you have 12 seconds left and then it's going to run some checks. Um, we'll get back to this later. Right now I just set visibility to private. Um, I would hit save but it's not done yet. I usually wait to hit save until the video is done. I don't touch any more of this. I could schedule it so that it's immediately ready. It's Sunday at 8 a.m. The problem with that is how I do it. I'm usually a video ahead in terms of uh, workload because I like members having the videos one week early. So what I usually do is I have to set it manually because you cannot schedule a video to be m made available to members at a certain time. You have to set it to be available to everyone at a certain time. You have no choice. I don't know why, but that's stupid. But because of that one change, that makes it so that I can't, like, schedule member videos to be public either, because the problem with scheduled videos is that the moment you schedule a video, it privates it. And when it privates it, it has a chance to delete the comments. Now, I don't think that's true, because I look back on my Bismuth video, not my Bismuth video, my new Lars video, which I observed having this phenomenon only to see that the old comments were back. So it's kind of finicky in how it works, but to avoid any tragedy or any comments that I would like to save, I only do it all manually, which is a pain in the ass. YouTube, if you're listening to this, please, please, please let us schedule videos that are member only and keep them member only. Don't private them. Make it so we can do that. So that saves me the hassle. But yeah, I just set it to private. I don't really touch it. And then I wake up early anyway. On Sundays, I get up early and just set the video to public a little earlier. I set the member the member video for the week to public. And when it comes to be eight o'clock, I set um, every 
everyone's video to be public. So, it's a bit of a process, but we get it done. Checks seem to be done. There seem to be no, uh, no issues. Very nice, very nice. It takes a while to process up to HD, but that's nothing I have to be here for. It's on private. I save. And I think that is it. That is the process of making and everything wrong with video. It's gonna take a while to process up to HD. And in the meantime, between now and Sunday, it could get a copyright problem, but that's very, very rare. That only ever happened to me during the movie. And I think that's a bit of a special case considering that's a movie. Most of these have come out completely fine. No issues whatsoever. So I typically don't have to worry about that. If monetization is turned on, then typically it's going to stay on. That could change. Turner could decide I'm done having a channel and nuke me any day, but hey, I guess we'll see if that happens, won't we? Yeah, I guess I don't really have anything else to add, so I'll catch you guys in the outro. Hope you enjoyed. And that's how I make an everything wrong with video. Save for a few modifications I might make here and there, this is set to be the process I use for pretty much the rest of the series. If you have any other questions regarding the process or want any more detail on some things, ask it in the comments. I'll try to get to it whenever I can. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to discuss something a little more serious. After watching all of this, some of you may be wondering, wow, this process doesn't take very long at all. Why do you stretch it all out across multiple days? Why not get it all done in one day and then spend the rest of your time doing other things for the channel. And that is a fair point, but the answer is simply my motivation. To get a little personal for a second here, I have a very hard time getting motivated to do much of anything. So a problem can arise where if I get too overwhelmed with something or I reach a certain breaking point, I kind of just quit, shut down for a while, then don't really get anything else done for a period of like a day, two days, whatever it might be. I've been working to alleviate it, but the best solution I have right now is to divide the work work up into manageable chunks. One day I write the script, the other day I do the voice lines. Then if I feel overwhelmed, the next day is when I edit the video. Not to mention, I need to make sure I have room in my personal life for things like family, a job, errands, relaxation time, etc. So spending too much time on everything wrong with it is simply not feasible. So then you might ask, why take these long breaks then? You have a good schedule, you seemingly have at least a decent balance of work and relaxation. What's the deal? And yeah, it's nice that I have a weekly series that gives me some motivation to get up and get something done while not overworking myself. But the truth is, this stuff gets tedious sometimes. If you watched back the footage of my editing, you may have noticed that most of it is the same few steps. Grab the footage, drag in the voice clip, the ding, increase the sin counter, put in subtitles, and repeat for the whole video. As you can imagine, doing that for up to 26 weeks straight, that's six and a half months by the way, can get a bit tiring. That's not not to say I don't enjoy making content, but like most things, too much of what you love can lead to you getting sick of it. And when you get sick of it, you tend to slip up more, make more mistakes, let more ideas pass you by than usual, that sort of thing. That's why I take these breaks. It gives my mind a chance to recharge, lets me focus on other things for a while before jumping back into it. If I really wanted to, I could probably finish the rest of the series in a little over a year if I took no breaks. But then I'd grow to hate doing it, and I don't want that. I want this to be a fun hobby that earns me some extra money on the side. And so I intend to not let myself get burnt out. Anyway, sorry about bringing down the mood a bit there. Seven years of everything wrong with Steven Universe. God damn. I've been doing this since I was 14. I'm 21 now. Everything wrong with Steven Universe has been a third of my life. Ugh, jeez. But I think that's enough rambling. It's time I wrap this up. Thank you guys for sticking around. It means a lot that you care enough to watch Watch me yell at a cartoon and some video games for as long as you have. Here's to another year of everything wrong with Steven Universe, and I hope you guys enjoyed this little video on how I do it every week. I'll catch you guys later. Bye!